The group joins us now from uh, Los Angeles Live. Would you please welcome back Barry Morris and Robin Gibb. <laughs> Hi, Hi. Welcome, fellas. Thanks for talking to us. How are you doing, Ray? Very well indeed. Album number 13, is that right? Uh, 30. 30. <laughs> but, and yet distinctly the BGs. I mean, I don't mean that as a silly or facetious question, but I mean, it's, uh, there is that style. You couldn't listen to that and not know it was you. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I think brothers, brother groups do tend to uh, have a certain distinctive sound. And uh, right from the very beginning in, in Australia, that sound was there between us. I think it applies to many groups that are actually brothers. So yeah. it, it's just that's our sound. That's how we sound. We can't yeah. help it. Yeah, no, I, I, don't, I didn't mean, as I said, I meant it as a serious question. It just seems that if you listen to the Bee Gees yeah. in, the, in the 70s or early 70s, that was the Bee Gees mm -hmm. sound. Here we're 25 years later. Oh, we've, mm -hmm. Yeah, we've evolved yeah. through different different sounds, including the falsetto sound and the normal three-part harmony. And we're also very fortunate to have different leads. I mean, Robin sings lead, I sing lead, and Morris also sings lead. So uh, we can vary our sound uh, in different shades, apart from falsetto. So oh, it's a good sound. Very fortunate. <clears throat> it's a great sound. Now, Barry, you've, we talked oh, children thanks, a moment. Mate. We talked children a moment ago. You've got a tribe. You've got five children? Uh, five what? Five children. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you had me a bit uh, confused for a second. Um, <laughs> yes, I have four boys and a girl. Yeah. So, so do, they, do your children listen to the old albums, and therefore, what do they think? Um, the, my children, well, first of all, my two eldest are just at the age where they're falling in love, and my, my eldest is, uh, is into heavy metal, but, but he also switches to different music, and he listens to our music, yeah. They're, they're pretty much into it. They, they like all kinds of music. Yeah, I think there's a, I don't know what it's like in Australia, but there's a very big uh, retro movement with Saturday Night Fever in the US and in UK. So it's, the kids are starting to hear this music all over again in the clubs and on radio it's here. very interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, why do you think that is? I mean, is that just the cycle of music? Or because it's great music? I, I think it's because Saturday Night Fever, the, the kids are actually discovering it now. It's an, an organic discovery, and they're starting to f discover it for themselves. Well, is, it, is it perhaps the 70s in itself, uh, regardless of the Bee Gees, I think the 70s is now becoming part of the overall culture, yeah, and it's not culture. something that um, perhaps you would criticize these days as you might have done maybe eight years ago. So I think maybe now it's just part of the, the overall era. Yeah, let me pick you up on that. I, last night I was reading a lot of articles about you again, just catching up on that. And things that you've said in recent times, despite the fact that Saturday Night Fever sold 30 million copies, things that you'd said indicated that you're somewhat sorry that you ever did the album. Is that true? Not true. No, 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 no we've never said that. No, we're very proud of that music. You know, yeah. it's just a lot of the media sort of played it down for a while because it wasn't hip to talk about it. Yeah. But ourselves, I mean, we've never defended the fact that we did it. We, we, we was just a project to us that was uh, music for an album that we were doing that was put into a film. Yeah, I mean, they're songs. And we're yeah. very proud of those songs. Yeah. I mean, How Deep Is Your Love to us was never a disco song. That was an R&B ballad. But because it was associated with the film... No, to, to us, they were just R&B songs. R&B, yeah. Staying Alive is an R&B song. Progressive, blue-eyed, yeah. white soul. Yeah. yeah. And but but, but, but the there were in the 70s, there were, there were uh, some radio stations did BG free weekends and, uh, and you were That's blamed right. with having introduced disco. Yeah, well, you got, you got, yeah. And at that time in the US, uh, it was so big, Saturday Night Fever, that it was impossible to go anywhere and not hear Saturday Night Fever. So in the end, it was, it was organic. There was no hype mm. about it, but it got so much that it was, it was sort of a gimmick to have BG free weekends. It wasn't done maliciously at first, but it got no. really intense at the end. Right. And even we got fed up with hearing ourselves on the radio to a point. So yeah. I think in the end, it, there was a certain backlash to it. But, we do, but let's just, let us just say that we don't defend any of our music. We're proud of every record we've ever made. Mm. And yeah. uh, that's simply the end of it. Staying Alive, mm. I've heard again, or I've read in those articles that you regard Staying Alive as arguably the best thing ever, right? Oh, in the top not, three? Not necessarily so. Well, we'd say, say one, one of them. Yeah. One of, definitely. Yeah, yeah, because it was a statement about the times. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, some, of those, some of our songs are special to us. Some of them don't mean a whole lot to us, but some of them are very special. Where To Love Somebody is very special to us. Mm. Uh, songs like Words, um, I Started a Joke. How Can You Mend a Broken Heart. How Can You Mend a Broken Heart. There are, mm. there are certain songs that mean a lot to us as far as memories are concerned. Yeah. Uh, how, how, what we were doing when we made the record, how we felt when we made the record. Mm. 
Those things come back to us whenever we sing those songs. They're very important. Well, they are great songs. I mean, 100, 100 million or so records later, it, it shows just how successful they've been. And yet you, for a while there, again, <coughs> correct me if I don't keep reading is wrong. Um, we will. Yeah. Vari variations, <laughs> of, variations of what we've just said. But, the, uh, but, but there was a while there where you turned off recording yourselves and just went to write for other people, like Barbara Streisand yeah. and Dolly Parton. Yeah. And, so on. and I think yeah. that, that goes back to what we were saying earlier about the, ex the, ex the saturation point of fever. We ourselves chose to actually get out of the we had to back away. limelight to get away from the image that the, the media wanted to create for the Bee Gees. So we but wanted to throw ourselves into producing but, but that did something for us in in the <laughs> in the respect that it's it it stretched our songwriting it gave us and a your chance well, right? we iron we iron our own underpants yes, incidentally oh, yeah. you do <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, <laughs> uh, i occasionally go jumping off cliffs uh, yeah right <laughs> uh, but um uh, but our mother used to iron our underpants too i think that's very important <laughs> well that's yeah. very reassuring <laughs> We work as a team. We work as a full and team. And she had three times as many underpants to iron, let me tell you. Um, While you're in the mood about parting <laughs> underpants, uh, yeah. let me take you back. On. In fact, we've still got this very studio where you guys first started performing on television with um, right. a cardboard cup cut out of Jeff Harvey across there. He's long gone. We've lost Jeff. But he, we've got the cut yeah. out there of those wow. days. Oh, like the beard, doing, Jeff. Jeff. Like yeah, the right. beard. Yeah, Just yeah, yeah. think, I seen I, the beard. If I'd stay Jeff, with you, blokes. Happened? If I'd stay with you blokes as musical director, I'd be very, very rich now, wouldn't I? Oh, I'd do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have, a look at a, have a look at a clip from, uh, from those days on Bandstand. Have a look. Okay. Oh, oh my old man's a dustman. He wears a dustman's hat. He wears gold blimey trousers. And he lives in a council flat. He looks a proper nana. His great big old male boots. He answers the job to pull them up. Then he calls them Daisy Roots. <laughs> You see, that is not... Now, I wonder why we didn't sell no, no, records in Australia. Not many groups can do that. <laughs> <laughs> not many want to. <laughs> Three Kisses of Love. Was that the first Australian song that you had? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. festival records. All right. So, so tell us about those days in Australia. I mean, was that eight years only, I know. It wasn't the, it was only a small part of your life. But nine years, nine years. All right. Well, that's yeah. the, the foundation, yeah. though, for, uh, for what made you hungry? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. The, the Australian scene... At, at late 50s into the 60s was a very um, the Australian people are very strong people so you, you've got to us anyway what we've learned is that they're the strong they're the most critical audiences in the world to work in front of if you if, if the RSL clubs in particular during that period um, very tough audiences if you didn't please those people you were never gonna make it so uh, it, it was great grounding for us most of them were drunk but it was <laughs> 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 it's pretty hard to please <laughs> Well, no, but if you didn't please those people, um, you, 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 pretty, you pretty much knew about it right off the bat. Yeah. So, so they throw glasses at you and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, Boris, you're quoted to get us saying that you, you didn't go after the money. It wasn't money that you wanted. It was fame. It was fame. Well, yeah, yeah. because... Uh, and then it, the money. And then the money. <laughs> no. Well, in Australia, the, in those days, I mean, the, the record industry and everything else was all very young as well. But uh, to make it internationally, in those days, they didn't have satellite, they didn't have videos or anything like that. So you had to actually leave England, to, uh, leave Australia to make it internationally, either in America or England. And uh, well, so... The Easy Beats did that. Yeah, the Easy and, Beats and, did it. Yeah. Normie Rowe. Right. Yeah, people, Normie Rowe. People, <laughs> and people did that. And, yeah. and we, we, was, we sort of picked up on that and thought, well, we should try this, you know. And a lot of people advised us not to go. And it was the end of the Mersey boom in England. And we thought, well, we've got a chance. We, we sort of believed that we had a chance. Mm. And uh, we had to make that move to do it internationally. Yeah. Um, mm. well, we could have stayed, but we, had to, but we had to take that chance. You wouldn't have sold 100 million plus records in that case. The, 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 the new album you've got out is <clears throat> Size Isn't Everything. That's yes. right. It's not personal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's not biographical anyway. You see, what we, we believe it's with. We don't think it's got anything to do with size. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm saying nothing. You just keep um, going, guys. I noticed. We yeah, noticed. Um, it's the underpants, you see. It keeps coming back. Um, <laughs> You've um, also said there should be a law about pop music. You don't take yourselves too seriously. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's a lot we of fun. We don't take anything seriously. <laughs> no. I think that in the genre of We Can't Dance, uh, which was the last album by Genesis, we chose to take a more sort of uh, less serious route with album titles, and I think that's... That's but we're also at that time in our lives where we're just we're having fun, you know. We're making our records uh, with the idea of having fun while we're doing it. If it's not fun at, uh, at this point in our lives, we shouldn't be doing it. All right. And uh, so we're enjoying making records now, and we're not 
We're not concerned about what people call those records. You can call them disco, you can call them R&B, you can call it anything you want, it's but it's just, it's just yeah. our music yeah. and we just make records. All right, the, the new album, is, as we said, uh, is out next week. Size isn't everything. I don't think anywhere in the world has been as loyal to the Bee Gees as Australia, so you always sell well here, yeah. so it's good to talk to you. We look forward to well, coming out. Yeah, thank you, Ray. We'd like to send all of our, our regards to, to our sister Leslie yeah. and uh, to all of our relatives in, in Australia and to all of our friends and fans. We love you all and, we, and we'll be back in uh, well, uh, summer, some yeah. point during the summer next year. During right. the, not summer your time of course, but during the summer winter. our time. Winter right. your time. Winter well, your time. Sometime <laughs> next year we'll work that out. Thanks guys. Would you please, we'll go to yeah, break yeah, with a, you, a clip from the new album, The Bee Gees. Thank you, Ray.